morning Suzuki community. It's cold in Arizona. We'll be skiing and snowboarding next week. Uh, that's the great thing about where I live. That I can go skiing, I can go off-roading, I can go bass fishing, I can do all the kinds of things that I'd like to do. And that's why I moved here. I didn't move here to start a company and get involved with Suzuki's as a Jeep guy. But man, do I love my Suzuki's and do I love the people in the Suzuki community. So today, today's sponsor is a friend of mine out in Florida, Lutz, Florida. It's a company called Extreme Zooks Off-Road. You can see the little banner right here and we'll have a link to their website. Richard Smith, known him for a very long time, called me one day and said, I build Suzuki's and I would like to um, get involved with you. And so I've never met Richard. We got close. I was in Louisiana once and he was in Louisiana, but we never hooked up. But today uh, we're going to be talking, because of Richard sponsored this video, we're going to be talking about differentials. So we're going to call this one Differentials 101. This is a class. I'm going to be talking about as many things as I can in a shorter period of time to educate you about all of the issues that you're going to run into with differentials. Now I did a little setup here on a Samurai Carrier. The Samurai Carrier is a little bit different than the Sidekick Carrier and we're going to be talking about mix matching gears and pinion sizes. Talking about sumo bearing kits from the factory with the factory stuff. But this is what I want to show you. What does an open differential mean in the Suzuki built cars? I've made a little display here for you and we're going to say that this is the tire that's buried in the rocks, buried under the log, buried under the whatever, roots of a tree, and here is your tire up in the air. Check this out. You're sitting there with your motor running, and if you see this, this tire's turning. I'll turn it a little bit at an angle here, so you can see that's an open dip. One tire is lodged fixed, and one tire in the air is rotating. That isn't going to get you anywhere. That's why we do lockers. So lockers are going to take that tire that was buried and this tire and it's going to turn it together and they're both going to dig. So next thing we're going to talk about is the difference between 22 spline and 26 spline. Now a lot of times I tell people, and of course that's black on black, so we're going to go, we'll go like this. So you can really get the idea here. So you can see I always tell people it's like your finger and your thumb. Now, I say on the phone, it's not exactly that difference, but it really is kind of close. So if this was your thumb, this would be your pinky finger. All Suzuki Samurais in all years came with 22 spline front axles. This is where it goes into what's called the side gear. We'll look at that in a minute. All rear axles on sidekicks in Suzuki Samurais were 26 spline. So a lot of times when we are upgrading a car, we're going to upgrade the side gears and do chromo axles in the front for your larger tires. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about ring and pinion. One of the biggest tricks I have for when you're changing ring and pinions is when you take your Samurai Carrier and you take your pinion out, you take the pinion bearing off, you get that shim from the stock gear and you put that shim on your new pinion and then press your bearing on. Hopefully your new bearing because you can, uh, you know, you can use used bearings, but why? They're cheap. They're Japanese. What, you know, always go new. And here's one thing, always, always eliminate the crush collar. I've talked about this over and over again. This is your bellied crush collar. It takes 175 pounds to bend that belly and that's going to give you the tension out on the pinion bearings. If you move the nut, if you shock this, it's going to move and then the pinion is going to grind into the teeth of the ring. So when you get our Sumo differential rebuild kit that comes with the notches, the coils, the races, the Japanese seal, a new nut, new bolts with Loctite on it, shims, just click the link for the solid spacer because as you see it's a solid spacer with shims. Once the setup's done, you don't have to worry about changing that seal and set it up again and it doesn't shock like a crush collar. So get rid of that crush collar. Okay, getting back to that trick. So you're always going to press on a new bearing. That shim is used for that carrier for the center line. 99% of the time I don't have to sit there with different shims and check it with yellow paint and measure it because that shim is for that carrier. So keep that in mind. Alright, we're going to start with a Samurai 
rear carrier, front carrier, they're exactly the same until you get into the fuel injected models. The fuel injected models are similar to the sidekick in that they only have one long pin. And so when you're doing a locker in the front of say a 93, 94, 95 and you see you only got one long pin, then there's a long pin, there's two short pins, these are for your spider gears and to rotate your side gears. When you've got the one pin then what you're going to do is find a rear Samurai carrier and use that in your front when you've got these newer fuel injected models where Samurai only did the one pin because you can't run a locker with one pin. If you do it'll just bust the long pin. Okay so inside the carrier you see is your first side gear. The side gear always has a thrust washer on it. Always. Do not run steel to steel whether you're doing a locker or not. And then, of course, your short, spin, your short pins are for two of the spiders. Each spider has its own cone washer. So if you're removing this and you think, you know, to put a locker in, for instance, then what you're going to do is zip tie that spider gear to that washer. You don't want to mix up the washer and the spider gears. So on this particular carrier, what's cool about it is it's got the same bolt pattern as all of the sidekick front IFS differentials and I've got three of them out here and want to talk about these. So when you take your Samurai and you put in the sidekick gears, I'm not a fan of that but it, it gets done, it's cheaper. Um, not that we're cheap people but it is less expensive but you need to know the problem with that. So first thing is when I tell people that you have got a pinion the size of a golf ball you literally can see here it's smaller than a golf ball. On a 512 ring and pinion from a front sidekick going into a Samurai, the head is so small that it's only engaging one tooth and only part, a quarter of another tooth, and that is less steel than a U-joint. So this is a weak link that you're putting into your gears. It would be better if you went with an aftermarket Samurai gear that is lower, like a 538 for instance, that has a larger pinion because it's stronger. Now, I'm not against doing this, I'm just letting you know that these are a failure point that fail quite often and something that you need to know when you do the 512s, the 430s, is that when you put in, and I'm just going to show it to you this way, when you put in your open or your locker and you put your ring on, it's different than a Samurai. This pin is floating right now. Now there are people out there that tell you to weld that. Now you're welding cold hard to a cast steel. That's a failure point. Uh, it's not that it's going to get stressed, but a locker can bang on that pin and break that weld. Now why I'm showing you this is because your pinion can hit this rod. And so there is a product out there, it's cheap, $25, it's called the coffee can. It goes over this to prevent the pinion from hitting this hard pin and ruining the ring and pinion. Yes, you can weld it, but if I would be so bold, if you're putting a locker in, you have to use a square. You just must. And so what I do when I'm doing lockers, like in sidekicks, that don't have the square, what I do is I weld the tack inside the square when it's all set up. Of course, after I tested the locker. Now, this pin is not going to move because it's fixed with little tacks here. Now, those tacks can be broken by simply punching on the hard pin. It'll break the tack and it will come out. That's my trick of doing that. Now, let's move on to get this situated here. Let's move on to the sidekick carrier. The sidekick carrier also has a hat but it's a different design. Same bolt pattern, same width, but they only come with one hole with one expansion pin to drive in to hold that pin. So I machine these so that I can do this. I now have the square in and now I have something to tack. 
after I've checked the locker, make sure the locker releases. I don't want to bust this out prematurely. And so one pin I'm going to use stock, and that's going to have the expansion pin to hold it, the long pin, so it's not going to rattle around. And the two short pins is where I'm going to put my little tack, but that's how you do a locker after you drill, well, I drill, you know, you got to know how to do that. I just had a fellow that called me and said, I could do that. And so I said, well, you know, normally I do this or that, but I'll sell you for one of these. And he's like, I can't afford not to buy that, so send me one. So anyways, that's the sidekick. That's the drill through for four pins for a locker. Now, what I also want to show you is that as you get into your different gear ratios, this is a 512, this is a 430, you notice it gets bigger, this is a 460, and of course this is your 357 Samurai Ring and Pinion, a lot stronger. I don't have anything here to show you the aftermarket gears I sell where the pin is held in place, but I do sell 457s, a lot of those, and I do sell 538s, not so many of those. Again, the pinion's smaller, and unless you're running super large tires, like I... I really like 34s, 35s on some of my stuff. And then what I'm doing is running like a 457 ring and pinion and a 416 or a 49, depending on if I want to go fast on the highway or really, really slow off road. Now, the coffee can kit that I talked about earlier, when you're taking the any of the sidekick ratios from the front, because the rear obviously won't fit, it's much larger, it won't fit into the Samurai. What I want you to know is that it's very shallow on the threads of the main cap. Now, when I look at this, I have about a half inch of thread. Because these rings are shallower than Samurai, you have to move the carrier over for the ring to engage the pinion. And what happens is you run out of threads on your spanner nut. This is your spanner nut. You know what it is. It's circle. And again, I'm going to warn you, because I've said this to too many people that tell me they're bleeding, this has a punched, this is manufactured by punching it, and it's got a razor edge on the inside circle. So when you're doing your spanner nuts, you do not put your fingers in there and t turn it unless you want to look like uh, scissor hands, whatever his name is. Anyways, there's a little can that works with the Samurai Carrier when you do the rings, and there's a little spacer right here, so you won't run out of threads on your spanner nut. Some of these gears are deeper, some of them are shallower. You don't know if you need the can, but the can works with all three of the sidekick front ratios. So get the can. The can goes over, then you put the hat on and it holds it on. And then of course it holds the pins from coming out. Alrighty, now let's talk about why I like to make rear hybrid center diffs into front axles and the reason is is because we can get much larger stronger pinions and be in that really deep gear ratio of 512. Now when we talk about gear ratios you might have noticed I said Samurai aftermarket has 457s and 538s made for the Samurai. Sidekicks have no gear ratios other than what the factory made. There's a rumor that a now defunct company bought all of the 588s from a particular manufacturer. The story is, is that he bought all of the 588s from the dealer. So a long time ago, this company in California had the, the very, very rare, even smaller pinion. And that came out of a car first called the Sidekick for six months in early 1989. They were made in 88. It had a 1.3 carbureted Hitachi engine and those cars only sold a few hundred in America. Now I've seen those cars sell for three thousand dollars without a drivetrain only because they had the stock 588s. And one more thing I'd like to mention. <clears throat> Don't correct me by telling me that's a 511.9 or that is a 431.2. I'm just using the numbers to give you the ranges. In the east, they call them 513s, and I call them 512s out here in the west. And so I don't want to get in an argument with you. I'm just letting you know that if you count the rings, they're not exactly, or if you count the teeth, they're not exactly the numbers I'm using, but we are giving you the idea. 512, what does that mean? 
It means the pinion has to go around five and a half times for the ring to go around once. Does that mean the tire is going to go around once? Yes, if it's locked. If it's open, you might have one tire go this and one tire go this, and it might not add up to the same. So it's almost impossible to know what the gear ratio is when it's all put together inside of an axle housing. You're not going to sit there and turn the drive shaft and watch one tire turn a certain amount of times. So you have to get, take them out, count the ring, count the pinion, divide them more by the less, and that's going to give you your ratios. And so there are no aftermarket ratios from any companies for the sidekicks and the trackers. Yes, there's companies that make lockers like ARB, and of course, a lot of you may know that the 1510 is the Samurai Power Tracks locker. I put them in the sidekicks. I don't pay extra for that extra number. It's the same locker. We haven't seen any difference between, I believe it's a 1512. We just buy the 1510s. There's a lot more of them. They're less expensive and they work in every sidekick I set up. So 1510 Power Tracks is what I sell. You'll see those on my website soon. Um, I really need to start sell, you know, selling more lockers instead of buying them from friends. Okay. So I do like the rear differentials on your larger, it's called the 9-inch ring. And just to give you an idea here, this is a rear sidekick ring. This is a front sidekick ring. And you can see that it's quite a bit taller. This is called the 7-inch. This is like 8 and 3 quarters, so it's called the 9-inch. And don't get that confused with the Ford 9-inch ring. And finally... All of your front sidekicks are the same 10 bolt as the Samurai. That's how this stuff is interchangeable to a degree. Unfortunately, there are many different kinds of differentials. I don't have a housing here, but there are both on the top. They're not both on the top. The cars with the lower links and upper links, you know, Vitaris, for instance. So one of the things you have to watch out for is when you're getting your, your rear carrier and you're buying something for it, keep in mind it could be a 10 bolt or a 12 bolt ring. We still don't know how to tell from the outside looking at it. We have to take it out of the housing, turn it around and look at it and go, do we got 10 or 12 bolts? So keep that in mind. But that's why I like these up front on a Samurai, so we make a hybrid axle. I don't know if uh, you know about it, but we've been making them for a long time and selling a lot of them. This is how we get RCV axles inside there and run big tires. I'm really happy 37-38s with that axle setup because that's a lot for a Samurai axle. As you know, if you're really over 35s and even at 35s, you should go to Toyota axle or hybrid axles. The Samurai axles kind of peak out on the chrome mollies at around 33. So we do a lot of 32-inch tires here, and I've never broken a Samurai rear axle. I've broken lots of fronts, and I've broken... Um, lots of Toyota rears, but I have never broken a rear Samurai axle. Now we get them in here twisted, uh, other people have broken them, but I haven't. Maybe it's because of the way I drive, and I, I'm a horrendous driver. I do very stupid things. I like to have fun off in the rocks. Anyways, that's today's video. I hope that you uh, learned a lot today, and I thank you very much for the subscriptions, the sharing. The, hit that notification button so you know um, our videos are getting watched a lot faster now. Uh, more and more people are hearing about it from my friends on YouTube watching me. So thank you very much for that. I will also have a link for our differential kit on the website. And we will be posting some of these details I shared so it's in text down below. And remember, this person right here, Richard Smith at Extreme Zooks Off-Road, he sponsored today's video, so I want to say thank you, Richard, for all the business that you have provided and all the help you've asked me for. It's always fun to talk to you. So goodbye, everybody. Have fun. Go wheeling. Be safe. And get the kids wheeling. Get them involved in it. Our sport is a fun sport. It's a safe sport. So let's go out there and have fun. Thank you very much for watching. Adios.